Hello, I'm Roy Steinberg, the Producing Artistic Director at Cape May Stage. And uh, by way of introduction, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and grew up in New York. Whenever I say that, I always feel a little more New York-y. <laughs> but uh, I didn't come from New York to Cape May. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I was working at a daytime television show, Days of Our Lives. I was a producer and director there for quite a while. And uh, so I'm an actor, director, producer, uh, professor for a time, and a guest artist at colleges all over the country, but I landed in beautiful Cape May, and I'm so very, very thankful for that. Cape May Arts is the reaction from artists in all different disciplines to the world around them through the lens of Cape May. I mean, artists always respond in their discipline to the world around them. We have Lord Debussy uh, doing La Mer and uh, Winslow Homer painting beautiful seascapes and uh, oh, Coleridge doing the rhyme of the ancient mariner. Well, we have our own Stan Spurlack doing beautiful pastels of the sunsets that are so specific to Cape May or Victor Grasso who includes sea creatures in his portraits. And of course we have singer songwriters and, and poets all talking about Cape May. Uh, the one thing that's extraordinary, though, I think, is that the theater encompasses all of the arts. The visual arts are represented in our sets and our lighting. Of course, the performing arts in acting and dance and music, sound, of course, sound design, and the literature of dramatic literature. We have Pulitzer Prize, even Nobel Prize winning artists that we produce on our main stage. So all of those are presented through the special lens of Cape May with ocean on one side and the Delaware Bay on the other. Well, the focus of Cape May stage is to provoke discussion amongst the visitors and the, the community at the highest level through the art of the theater. So we bring in Tony Award winning directors like Austin Pendleton. In fact, just before this pandemic, we did a play called Sidekicked. It was written by Kim Powers, who is a Peabody Award winner, an Emmy Award winner, uh, starred a woman named Sally Mays, who was a Tony Award nominee. Even the costumes were designed by a Tony Award costume designer, Jess Goldstein. And that's why we're called the Premier Theater in South Jersey. I think the thing that's so extraordinary about this place is that people who come to the theater will say, you know, I live in New York. I don't need to come to Cape May to see theater. But when I come to Cape May, one of the first things I do is book tickets. The art scene in Cape May is so robust because of the people who live here. You know, there are people who have retired here. Uh, who are quite sophisticated, or are people who visit here, people who have second homes, even third homes, and they go to theater in New York, and they go to theater in London or Washington or Philadelphia, and they'll, they'll compare it. And it's not just theater, because people will go to art galleries and, and concerts. And I think that the community supports the arts. Unlike other towns on the on Jersey Shore, we have more than just sand. You know, people <laughs> laugh and say, if you want to go see something, you can go to some other towns just to go to the beach, but you have to come to Cape May to see really wonderful art. I choose the plays that we bring to Cape May stage around a certain theme. Each year, I think about what's really going on in the world. And right now, the, for me, the biggest question we have is fact or fiction. So all of the plays in some way deal with fact or fiction, whether it's memory, do you remember it the way it really was? I, I think of myself, you know, I've told certain stories over and over and over again, and I think I'm telling the truth, but I'm not sure. Sometimes I think, well, maybe I have exaggerated something just for the sake of a good story. Not intentionally, but I think it's I think it, it's very possible. And I think that happens internationally. I think it happens on a domestic level. I think it happens in all parts of life. We don't take any sides, but uh, we like to present the question. And the plays we're doing this season often deal 
with memory. And just for example, the very first play we're doing deals with baseball. And we have Satchel Page who talks about you know, growing up and they threw a big parade for me and everything was great. And he says, well, actually that didn't really happen. <laughs> so that's kind of gives you a flavor of how with humor and entertainment, we can still talk about a particular theme. There's something about sitting in the dark with a group of strangers and everyone at the same exact moment holding their breath or laughing or crying that brings people together. So that's what theater does. At Cape May, we take it a step further because the plays we do deal specifically with Cape May. Sometimes it's just readings. We did a whole series of readings about, for example, the water. And we did plays like Edward Bond's The Sea and Eugene O'Neill's Sea Plays. Uh, we did on our main stage a play called The Shucked, took place on an oyster boat. We had a real oyster boat right on our stage. Extraordinary. Uh, we, Cape May is known for its Victorian architecture. We did a play that took place in Victorian times called Romance, Romance. Even our physical theater, the beautiful Robert Shackleton Playhouse, was built in 1853. And so we did a play a while back called The Whipping Man that took place in 1865. So since our building was built in 1853, we were delighted to be able to use that venue and make that the set for a play that took place in 1865. So all of these plays resonate in some way specifically to Cape May, and that's what brings people together. This is such a special time for the world, not just for Cape May stage, but for this Cape May stage in particular. You know, the theater just bought some property. So we have new housing for our actors and a place to build our sets and house our props and our scenery and our costumes. And so as we look to the future, we look to use some of these newfound uh, opportunities. I think too, all of us need to just take a breath. For the last two or three years, I've been holding my breath. I don't know what's coming next. I'm a little uncertain. I'm a little frightened to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think the future will be a time to collectively breathe, love each other, and accept what the world has to give us and grow and use theater to celebrate life. You can learn more about Cape May Stage at our website, capemaystage.org. And on that website, you can find out about past productions. And uh, most importantly, you can see what's going on right now at the theater and how to buy tickets. I think the best way to find out about more about Cape May Stage is come see a play. I think I'm most proud about the work that Cape May Stage is doing uh, from something that a, a patron actually said to me. A, a woman said, you know, I used to subscribe because of the titles I knew, but now I subscribe because of the titles I don't know. I've come to learn that everything that they do at Cape May Stage is interesting, even if it's something I knew nothing about. And so I cheerfully come to a play knowing nothing at all about it, I'm just putting myself in the hands of Cape May Stage and being very thankful for it. Mm -hmm.